Hi everyone! Welcome back. In the video that's going to be following this little introduction, which I'm actually recording a day later, maybe two days later. Anyway, in this video I'm going to be showing you how I can bone-in chicken breast. This is a super duper convenient thing to do. I absolutely love it and I highly recommend it. Um, so just watch. It's pretty quick and you'll be amazed at how easy this is. All right, thanks a lot. Okay, so let's get started. If you're going to can chicken breasts, you obviously need some chicken breasts. So I went to the Piggly Wiggly yesterday and I got two packages of these chicken breasts. There's four in each package and my goal is to get two pounds in each jar. And so, because these are quart jars that I have right here, and so I, I, I will stuff down in there two chicken breasts in each jar and then some salt and that's it. This is the easiest project. I cannot tell you how convenient this is. The texture of the chicken is going to be just a, it's going to be a little bit different than if you just stewed it on the stove or just boiled it on the stove. It's obviously going to be different than roasting it. It's going to be very, very tender and very shreddable. So it's going to be an ideal thing to have for making dishes um, that require shredded chicken. And that would include anything from like the chicken and pastry that I made in the earlier video, as well as things like making enchiladas or chicken casseroles, chicken soups, chicken salad. I mean, the list is just endless. There's so many things you can do. going to add some salt to the jars and I'm using canning salt but any non iodized salt will do you can use regular table salt but it's going to make your jars cloudy and I know you might be wondering why I'm not adding any liquid when you do a raw pack of chicken or any meat for that matter you don't add liquid because the meat makes its own liquid in the jar Okay, so I have all the jars of chicken in the canner. I have the extra bottle, I mean the extra jar with water in the canner, as well as a pint jar with water in the canner. I have water filled up to the fill line inside of my canner. With a pressure canner, unlike a water bath canner, you don't fill the canner up all the way. You're only putting a few inches in the bottom. In this case, I've got the water in there, but I'm also gonna put a splash of vinegar in the water. And the reason why we do that, it's not necessary, but it will help keep your jars clean. I have checked already to make sure that the little valve is clear so that I can see through it. You always want to check your valve to make sure you can see light through it. I'm going to put this in place and I'm going to put my canner on high, bring it up to a boil. Once the steam starts coming out of this little valve right here, 
I'm going to put my timer on for 10 minutes. After 10 minutes of steam coming out of this valve, then I'm going to put my little pressure regulator on top. It's like a little weight. And then at that point, it's going to start climbing up the gauge. Once it gets to 11 pounds pressure, I need to hold the pressure steady at that point, which means before that time, I'll turn the temperature down some. Not all the way, just little by little, because the trick is you want to keep it at your, your required pressure. Where I live, at sea level, it's going to be 11 pounds pressure for my particular pressure canner. But I'm going to have a link in the description below to the National Center for Home Food Preservation. And it will let you know, based on your elevation where you live, how much time you should pressure can something for. You cannot water bath can chicken. You have to pressure can chicken. That's very, very important. Any kind of meat has to be pressure canned. Vegetables have to be pressure canned. There's just no two ways about it. The only things that you can water bath can are going to be fruits and pickled foods, which means foods with a lot of vinegar because they have enough acid to kill botulism. But any non-acidic foods like vegetables and meats have to be pressure canned. And they're pressure canned for different amounts of time depending on what it is that you're pressure canning. In this case, it's chicken. Chicken on the bone. So the amount of time is going to be 75 minutes or an hour and 15 minutes for quarts. If I was doing pints, it would be an hour. Interestingly, if this was boneless chicken, it would be 75 minutes for pints and 90 minutes for quarts. But as I said, this is chicken on the bone in quarts, so it's going to be 75 minutes once it gets to the correct pressure. Alright, it's almost done. Just a few more seconds. There's the timer. Alright, I'm just going to turn the burner off. And usually I'll just go ahead and slide it over and wait for the temperature to come down. Alrighty, I'm going to Lift this up so you can see. See how that little button has gone down? That means it's safe to take this regulator off and to take the jars out of the canner. When you open the canner, it's very important that you open the lid away from you because if you don't, you are liable to get burned with steam. So I'm just going to open it like that and then that steam comes out. Everything looks great. Look at there. Now, I just have to wait until these jars have completely sealed. I'm going to give them overnight. It's, it's 10 o'clock right now, so I'm just going to let them rest here on my stove overnight. You'll notice I put the jars on this dish towel because, as I mentioned in the peach jam video, 
whenever you're canning and you remove jars from the canner, you don't want to put them directly on a surface like your stove or like your countertop because they might be kind of a cool surface and the temperature change could cause thermal shock and you do not want that to happen. So I'm just going to let these sit here. I'm not going to mess with the tops of the jars or anything. They look like they probably came out just fine. So I'll check back with you in the morning. Alrighty, so it's the next day. It's actually afternoon now, it's not morning. I know I said I'd come back in the morning and show you, but um, I've already, I've had a busy day and this is the first chance I've had to film this, but I wanted you to see these jars of chicken. Check that out. Do you see that beautiful liquid in that jar? That is juice from that chicken that was produced during the canning process. Um, these are going to be so great to use for chicken and pastry or if I make chicken and rice soup, chicken and dumplings. Um, the same chicken can be used for, as I mentioned, so many different things. Um, so I hope you'll give this a try. Um, I, do re I, will, I will say a couple of things. I do recommend using chicken breasts that aren't those huge Franken chicken breasts because those are just too big and they're really hard to fit in the jars. You're going to have a hard time getting two of those in a jar. Try to get smaller chicken breasts. Um, and you can also can chicken not on the bone. Um, that's perfectly fine. The only difference is I like to can it on the bone and off the bone for different reasons. Um, but for something like this I like it because it does um, have the broth that comes from the skin and the bones and whatnot. So give this a try. Let me know what you think. Okay, I didn't realize until like a day later that I had forgotten to record the ending part where I tell you all, thank you for watching the video. If you like it, comment below. If you like it, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. Um, hit the notification bell so that you'll be notified when new videos come out. I forgot to do all that and I had to do it. I was here putting this video together in um, my movie and was getting ready to upload it to YouTube <laughs> and I was like oh my gosh so I just figured I'd go ahead and record it real quick on my laptop so anyway thank you so much for watching um, and there'll be more videos and the, the sound quality was largely better on this one except for a couple of parts where I forgot to put my microphone back on but anyway it's okay I think you you got the, the point of everything but stick with me it'll just keep getting better and better I really appreciate you watching have a great rest of your week and a great weekend bye bye